And just check it, uh, folks online, you guys can, um, I can't see the chat, but if you guys can just unmute and tell me if you guys can see the screen okay. The slides okay. Yeah, we can see them, John, John it's perfect. Okay, good, thanks, thanks. Well, give me like one minute, we'll get going. So Rosie was like, you can come with us and work on all the June stuff. So are you coming with us? I'll probably help out with the June one. We'll probably see you there. And we'll probably, we'll probably need to do more of the fall ones. So, most of the surveys are for the time when that we just translocated. And with that system being open for as long as it has been, you're not going to. Okay, guys, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's keep, keep going here. Let's keep going. If you guys need to grab a drink, whatever, go ahead. I'm going to start with, uh, so we have a, a formal break in about 45 minutes, so you guys can stretch and, and make phone calls or do whatever you need um, in a bit. Um, but I wanted to uh, start with just giving you guys the sort of mile high overview of our project. Um, uh, some folks have known about this for a long time, other people have been brought in more recently, so just so we're all on the same page. So I'll talk for a little bit about the, the overall project, and then I'll um, pass it on to Rich, and we're going to start with some um, just initial discussion uh, items about uh, definitions, and, and so that we're all on the same page with things, or at least we're, we've had some discussion about some of these things. So, um, this is the formal title of our project, Improved Mitigation Frameworks Guidance for Improved Restoration Efficacy Across California's Coastal Zone. Wow, large, large, large thing, what are we doing here? Um, so we just did that, we just did introductions. Okay, so um, uh, these slides have too much text on them, but we figured since people might be wa watching these in a recorded context, um, we figured it was okay, but, but uh, I, I will acknowledge as a instructor that likes to pride myself on good slides. Uh, I was adding more stuff in last night. Rich was trying to delete more stuff saying, no, 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 we didn't get rid of it. So, uh, so there's, there's a bit of a dynamic battle here. But um, in, in short, this, is being, this effort is being funded um, by uh, an effort that was uh, begun several years ago that was a one-time allocation of funding to the CSU. In the CSU, we have a 23-campus-wide um, system uh, our collaborative network called COAST, the acronym is COAST, but the idea is to encourage uh, research, teaching, um, useful uh, management products related to the broadly uh, defined coastal zone. And so um, we got this chunk of money and it, it started being doled out. Um, the, the first round, uh, the first round, my class can't remember, the first round was sea level rise. And so um, some of my colleagues are, are um, running that, uh, are run, running one of the projects on that, which is looking at um, uh, modeling sea level rise, and we're looking particularly at access to the coastal zone, uh, a lot of dimensions environmental justice, um, that's become a very cool project. And that's having some, just getting ready to start to have some tangible benefits. Um, the second, uh, second phase was about uh, microplastics and things of that nature. This, um, uh, project that we're on is the is the was the third round of funding um, and the uh, so the the it's the program is called the state science information needs program or SNP uh, um, uh, but the real goal again is to provide science to inform policy so it's it's not research for research sake it's, it's directly applied um, for uh, uh, crises or, or, or dire needs or, or um, uncertainties uh, for managers and policy folks in California. And so um, this round was focused on informing ocean and coastal compensatory mitigation and associated uh, projects. I think we funded three or four projects, one of which is, is this one. Um, most of the funding is for more, um, we might call traditional stuff. So looking at the efficacy of, of a particular ecosystem and a particular action. This one was quite, this project is very different from, I think just about all the stuff we've funded so far, which is it's very generic in nature. It's very, very um, sort of uh, conceptual um, uh, in, in design and uh, hopefully in, in deliverables. Um, the, the, the call for this came out in uh, the summer of, of 2021. It officially was, was due um, 2021. Um, it took about a year to get the stuff back and, 
And so we heard basically uh, last summer, last summer, um, that oh, you guys got some money, so it was great. By the time we got stuff set up, it was the school year, a bunch of chaos and craziness things that happened. We were hoping to start around Christmas break. Obviously, we're, we're starting here in early summer. Um, but I'm super, super excited that we're, we're finally starting. So it's been so many years of, of thinking of this. Um, and uh, I'm just super excited that I am um, very soon to no longer be the chair of my department. And so I can actually put the kind of time that's needed into this and many of my other projects. Um, uh, this was uh, an effort that um, has already been referenced, but uh, several of us were involved with. Um, and this was um, an effort to look at, uh, an OPC effort to look at some of the uh, consequences of once through cooling. And uh, as we um, allowed some of those uh, once through cooling uh, plants to continue to operate, they were allowed to operate um, uh, by paying a fee, essentially. And that fee was to go to uh, 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 heal, um, uh, compensate some of the resources that were being damaged by that, that old technology of seawater intake and larval harm and all that kind of good stuff. Wrong working group, Sean. Oh, that's the wrong one? Yeah. Which was this one? Well, I mean, this was a, so Sean, Sean and I, and then Pete was on this one, have been a couple of OPC working groups related to mitigation, but this, oh, one, this is that one. Okay, this right, is right, a different right, one. Right, right, sorry. Okay, good. Um, do you, I mean, no, no, go, go, go. Well, so, so the OPC in particular was interested. So some of the issues that we've heard us talk about show some of the limitations to like the traditional mitigation approaches and in particular in kind in, in on site where there are limited opportunities. And so the OPC asked a group of us, um, including Sean and Pete Ramondi and I, to, um, to look at possibilities beyond traditional approaches. And so that's what this group did. And you know, there are a number of the things that we talked about, we'll talk about a little bit more in the future that came up in this group. But in particular, we made a set of recommendations about, about how marine mitigation should be um, approached or implemented in California, and then sort of how we might be able to push beyond those traditional boundaries. And so the first recommendation here was to improve the current practice of mitigation. And so Really, these recommendations are like the seed to this project that we submitted, the proposal we submitted to COPE. So, you know, develop models or approaches for determining the equivalency for out of kind mitigation, which we've talked about here. Consider mitigation for lost ecosystem services as well as lost area and function. Include a full accounting of how the amount and type of mitigation was determined and how it fully compensates for the loss of mitigation planning. So, those mitigations come out of the review that the working group did on sort of like the current approaches to mitigation in ways that we thought it should be improved. Improved. Good. Yes. Uh, I, sh I should look at the slides before we talk about it. So, uh, uh, but the, these themes keep showing up, right? We've all heard this. We've all we've all discussed that. Oh, we we really need clear guidance, et cetera. And so these ideas keep showing up. So this is um, again, this is super long. Um, this is from our charge, and I, I shared this with I think just about everybody. But um, this boils down to uh, uh, we are proposing to provide some well-articulated guidance for when and how to, to do out-of-kind off-site um, mitigation. And, and that's what we're, we're hoping to do with this uh, project. So as originally proposed, we had four phases. Um, we had to, um, we, we, we phased it back a little bit because of some budget negotiations. Um, to allow another project to, to be funded, which was which is totally cool. Um, all, um, as we originally proposed it, um, uh, we are doing phase one. This is that's exactly as we proposed. And this first phase, which is we're, which we're formally starting today, um, is to provide general guidance that will apply across the coastal zone. So 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 um, community independent. Um, what are the, the guiding principles? What is the um, uh, understanding, etc. This will end, um, and then we'll roll into phase two. Phase two is to try to apply some of that general guidance in a very, in very specific uh, context. Um, uh, again, because of the, the, we had proposed a certain number of um, systems to do this in, because of the slightly reduced funding, we will do a smaller number of them. But um, uh, everybody here is gonna help us with phase one, and I know everybody's busy, and if, if you guys are done with phase one, 
you, you can disappear. Um, um, we will reconstitute uh, phase two, and, and this might be folks with different expertise, et cetera. Um, uh, of course, you all are invited to continue to help out and, and, and um, stay engaged, but we're not assuming you will all, you've all committed to several years worth of collaboration by, by coming to a workshop meeting or something. But, but um, this phase two will look at, say, oyster reefs or, or whatever and see if can we, can we apply those general principles in this specific California coastal context. Um, uh, we had a drop of uh, phase three, uh, but then, then the final, the original phase three, and the final phase three is to just synthesize all this and come up with a, with a um, robust white paper for our agency partners that can help them with their um, policy going forward. So that's the overall plan. What we're doing, um, this phase that we're in right here, which is the, um, I think in, in a lot of senses, perhaps the most fun phase and that we're just sort of brainstorming and coming up with ideas and dreaming kind of thing. Um, uh, this is our, our uh, rough timeline here. So, so we're, we're, we started trying to pull you guys together um, a bit ago and, and think who might be helpful and, and interested in all this kind of stuff. Um, and now we're, we're in the, our first workshop. And so today, today is really about, uh, today and tomorrow, really about getting started, throwing ideas on the wall, just gathering initial ideas, not so much culling things as, as much as just making sure we're hearing from everybody and, and weird ideas and, and did we think about this type of type of situation and, and also provide reality checks. Is this is this even should we even be going down this path type of thing. Um, and then uh, after after our workshop here, um, we'll, we'll spill into the summer and the summer we're um, intending on uh, zoom based meetings where folks will touch base. And you all, as, as experts, will be providing guidance into um, uh, some of the, the themes and the concepts that we'll be developing. And um, you will all have um, assistance. So one of the issues we've identified with these working groups in the past is, is and many of us have been involved with them, um, we come together and you know it's great, we come together for a workshop or two or whatever, and then it's go away and do a bunch of work kind of on your own time to write these reports and it's, it's always a struggle. So the idea here is we're trying to have this relatively well resourced. So each, so we will break up into smaller groups after today to work on different uh, subcomponents, and each of those will have um, uh, at least one student assistant. So, so the idea is you're like, man, there's this great paper from blah 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 that I think spoke to this. You don't need to go run. That. I mean, if you have it, that would be convenient. But you don't need to go run that down. We'll have assistants like Max to go uh, track those things down, pull it into a database and do a lot of the things we just don't have time to do in our, in our other busy lives. So what we're asking you guys to commit to is, is to provide that intellectual input as we go through the, you know, the summer and, and guidance, but don't feel like you have to do a lot of the busy work that, that takes so much time and we just seem to always get pushed off our, pushed off our schedules <clears throat> when the crises uh, uh, erupt. Um, and so we are trying to build a robust review of the literature. What is the support for this concept? And so we really do want to have a, a, a nicely um, referenced and well-supported um, justification for these, uh, these recommendations and the, this guidance. Um, uh, August, we'd like to see a draft of, 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 you know, of what your, your subgroup is, is thinking of um, and so that we can make sure we're all sort of writing it from the same perspective and that we, where there's some consistency there. Um, we'll work for a, a revised version um, uh, to us in September. And that's a version we probably want to start ship shopping around again in draft form to our agency partners and say, hey, do you think this is going to be useful? Is this going to be helpful to the commission or to Fish and Wildlife or whatever? Or is it just totally off the mark? Do we need to um, come back and do more revision? Or, or have, we, have we missed a, a large chunk of, of, uh, of your concerns, that type of thing? And then we'll come together. Um, we're targeting, we'll talk about this later, but we're targeting September 27th for a one day um, get together. So the, the struggles in getting this together, it's clear it's hard to, for us all to come together for a two day in person, but, but we'll do one more one day in person. Where we'll come together and work on some of that synthesis in, in, in face to face uh, conversation um, so that by um, October we should have um, at least the majority of this phase one uh, locked and loaded. Cool. Does that, that stuff make sense so far about our overall project, this phase one? Yes, Spencer. Yeah, I, I've got to say that um, as somebody who works with the Corps of Engineers, and I think Eric can appreciate this too, is um, talking to some of the old timers, there's a concern that the Corps of Engineers hasn't done enough research 
of weight in that some of our, <laughs> Eric, I'll name drop for Eric, Bob Lickbar, I remember on the way out the door, Bob said to me, he's like, you know, we used, to, we used to be committed to doing research and really trying to get at some of these problems. He's like, we just don't do it anymore. He's like, our science is stuck in the 80s or the 90s. And so what I like about the, your goals with this is that you, you want to provide the science that can help yes. decision makers and policy makers um, with, frankly, what are some very difficult problems. Absolutely. And we, we're not going to have all the answers, but we could come up with some good recommendations. And I think that's really important. I'm hoping that maybe this spurs other efforts because mm -hmm. we, we have a lot of important, frankly, research questions that would benefit from groups like these. So, complete um, Great job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we're so smart, right? <laughs> I have a question, Sean. And so, you and I have talked about this a little bit offline, right? So, that, so like, we did the you know, whole type conversion framework with the Bay Area team, mm -hmm. right? Um, but my question really is about the process for the interaction with the agencies, right? Yeah. Because because ultimately these things are only I'm sitting right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Thanks, Ben. Yeah. 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 But, but I think you know. Totally. But you know the uptake is it's a very iterative process, right? Yes. And spent you, you know you kind of touch heads. Mm -hmm. We've worked a lot together, right? And it's there's a lot of that back and forth, right? Because every agency has its own process and procedures and um, limitations, right? And so so not to you know blow up that whole box, but it's really just a question of a kind of a philosophical approach sure. for, you know, interacting with the broader universe of agencies, right, to try and gain some some buy-in on what we come up with, right, so that when we're done, there's kind of an ownership, right? So, totally. Yeah. Completely. Back. So, so my question is, yeah, but this is process. Well, hopefully, having three agencies in the room right now that work in very... Oh, yeah. Not in the room. Fine, but in the okay, room. Mike, I'll include Mike. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yes, of course, Ocean Technology Council. Um, hopefully, we can help with that mm -hmm. piece, you know, in terms of letting you know what kind of limitations we all have. Yeah. Or close, we all work very, very close together, but we all have very different. Mm -hmm. Needs. Mandates yeah. and, and policies, and sometimes they spectacularly clash. You know, so I, I think that hopefully, with having agencies in the room or online, however, engaging us now in this scoping session, if you will, is hopefully going to help that so that we can see what those pivotal points might be or those issues might be that we can at least alert you to, mm -hmm. and then, you know, totally. kind of go from there. But, but the point's really good, but that is exactly is. why we have agencies yeah. involved right now, is to try to, to make sure that those issues and limitations are built in from the very beginning. But nonetheless, the, the ultimate process, so the whole program is trying to provide advice, practical advice, but how you actually do it and make it effective so that it actually gets implemented is, a, is, a, is for sure a huge challenge. So, I mean, even just having agency representation doesn't do it because Becky can't make sure that the yeah. whole department is going to right. follow whatever guidelines right. come up or whatever. And so I would say this is something maybe we, we should keep it in mind and we maybe through the course of the summer can come back to this, but especially like in this synthesis workshop, this final workshop, maybe we can try to develop um, some better procedures. Because I think that this is not something that is, we don't know. Yeah. I mean, and it wasn't really built into the grant. Um, you know, I think it's, and I think, didn't you mention the mitigation and restoration policy for OPC? So, I didn't because I still haven't seen it yet. Okay. But, um, I don't but, I did, but I did, yeah, that, what Mike was talking about oh, is Mike. essentially, Mike mentioned it, and it's something that we've been talking with OPC about to help us with that for the last, I don't know, a couple of years. It's been taking a while to get, get it off the ground because there's a lot of other things that are going on, but yes, and that's because we have struggled for so long, and it's one of the things that keeps me up at night. One of the things I wish I could have gotten a handle on before I exit was this peak, it's huge, and mm -hmm. it's not getting any better, it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. 
with all the other stuff happening. So that, this is like a short general guidance document, and even that it's hard to get through, you know, get, all right, get it through the agency, get agency comments, get agency buy-in, everything like that. I would say that our, our goal with this effort would be to essentially be have this be incorporated into that guidance document. Um, so that's you know one way maybe where it will but of course this is you know the timing is not going to be perfect because hopefully that will go through and be vetted by the agencies before we're done with our right. and there's probably some leverage opportunities right because Christine and Rich are and I are involved with this EPA funded project, right? Um, yeah. with the Coastal Conservancy, Katie's on the on the call. Um, which is really aimed at like how do you how do we work with the coast primarily the coastal commission and the core, right? Mm -hmm. To incorporate some of the monitoring approaches mm -hmm. that we developed with OPC mm -hmm. and how do we like get those into the regulatory process, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit more. And so hopefully there's some leveraging opportunities totally. there. Right? Totally. So. Yeah, and I would say I think a lot of it too is, you know, always just keeping in mind it's guidance. It's yeah. not, you know, right. <laughs> it's not something that we're bound to. But if it's good guidance and it's and it's appreciative of the constraints that we have, mm -hmm. then it's easier for us to then you know make reference to it, incorporate <laughs> it. I mean, everything we look at is case by case, and so there's always these nuances mm -hmm. that you know a general document is not going to be able to speak to. But if all of the the aspects of it that are there are compatible, that makes it a really useful tool for us. And then I have just one other comment about. How, what might help, and that is in the next phase, when we're picking specific systems or case studies, it would be useful to get agency yes. input into what would be the cases that would be of greatest value to them, because at this point we're doing something that's more general, but then we're actually gonna try to like, you know, implement mm -hmm. whatever we come up with here in a real, in a real example, mm -hmm. and so, we in the proposal we mentioned a few possible Kennedy habitats, but we're not bound to any of those, so we can pick whatever is the best. And so, whatever. Particularly when we propose four, we but the funny we can do, just do two. So we have to even our limited we have to be selective on. So yeah. Totally. But if it but so the idea is though if the commission thinks that there's some particular thing that's been a yes. a problem consistently, yes. then we can work through like what the issues are in there and try to come up with much more specific guidance that then could help when you have a case like that where you could go to this and you could see a, a, a process for trying to... Absolutely. So to, just to leverage um, or build on Rich's point here, so we have CDFW, Coastal Commission, and the core. Frankly, I've had um, difficult discussions at times with the National Marine Fishery Service and Fish and Wildlife Service. Mm -hmm. There's also the State Water Resources Control Board, mm -hmm. Regional Water Quality Board. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. to, did, were they invited? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, uh, well, some of them were, yes, yes. And and timing, it, it, was, it was difficult to find think, folks. I don't think we could try to get things here. Not NIST, but Water Board yeah. and some of the others. Just to get their perspective, to hear like what their concerns okay. are. Yeah. Because yeah. I can tell you, like, I mean, we're aware of things that happen at Bolsa Chica, and I remember having conversations, because I used to handle Port of Los Angeles projects, and I remember having conversations with Bob Hoffman and Jack Venture, okay. and again, it was like this open water issue, and oh, well, no, we, we can't just have wetlands mitigate this stuff, and it's like, well, coastal wetlands are important too, and so they didn't want to have the conversation, and, and basically, at Biona, they were thinking, hey, we're going to go do open water again. Yeah, right. And I said, not on my watch. You're not going to do that. We're not going to have a bathtub in my own. And so it's, we work with those agencies. They will often have to do biological opinions, and so we've got to work with them. And so their perspective is important. Um, we might not always agree with it, but we need that perspective. We need to hear, like, do they still have these concerns? Okay, so, so, so I do think there's, I think there's some shift, right? Because I actually think Leah worked on this, right? Right, yeah. you, with, with Brian Chesney, right? Like, what you worked on? Yeah. Yeah, Brian's a good friend. Yeah. Brian's a good friend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so <laughs> he's <laughs> For a change. For a change. So, actually, some 
we don't have to do it right now. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think that would be it would be useful to. So I mean, Sean's going to talk about what happens after this yeah. meeting, right? And and so clearly, our goal is to provide to try to bring more people into the process of of working on this report, but also then we have the part that Eric was asking about is like how are we going to get agencies involved? And so we have we have multiple opportunities. And so I think I'd, I'd be interested in hearing suggestions from anybody who has totally. suggestions totally. about who would be the best people to get involved. Totally, totally. I, I have to just get some clarification. So you want to get the agencies involved and uh, say there's all buy-in. I mean, the guidelines that you guys are going to create, we're all going to plan to create, are outside the typical mitigation bank ideas right now. Yeah. Is, is it going to have to result in some rulemaking at some point? It could. Potentially. I mean, I mean that, that, that's not our charge to no, create new rules. No, but, I know. But it, it could. seems like that should but be, it could. we should have that in mind is, is that if you really want it to work, you're probably going to get some rule made. Yeah. yeah, well, it, maybe. But I mean, there's there's policy guidance that's short of rulemaking that can still influence the way decisions are made. Yeah. Well, that's, that's true, but it's easier as a manager if there's a rule versus a policy. Yeah. Well, and to well, your point, and so in 2001, there was, an, there was an NRC group that came out in Southern California, Mark Sudo was partly behind that happening, and they, they looked at a bunch of sites, some of them were sites that he evaluated for his dissertation, and they came up with a bunch of recommendations and a report, and that report was cited liberally in the 2008 mitigation rule that the court uses, and so those types of you know, opportunities can, can, can result in rules. Or can right. Change. Well, that's another great example. Of so we court case can make a rule. So we would love to have that be okay. formalized, but it, I would say, without a doubt, is beyond the scope yeah, of yeah. our project, and that then becomes and that but that is part of what OPC is trying to do in leading this restoration and mitigation guidelines for the state for marine mitigation in yeah. this direction. The policy. Yeah. 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 Uh, to, sorry, which go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say is to try is to try to move that. But then I don't know what a next step would be in terms of how to make a rule. And so sure. that would that would be really uh, you know, I think our goal is to make this so useful for the agencies that they want to use yes. it, right? Because yes. if it's not, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we have gone through this whole yeah. process. We we could do, we. I mean, we in this room could come up with a whole bunch of ideas right now, but if it's not really useful, they're not going to want to use it. Right. I, I suspect there will be things that come out that are going to be able to be right off the bat, <laughs> utilized freely. There are going to be other things that agencies individually, collectively, are going to have to figure out how to utilize that particular guidance because it conflicts with an existing piece of you know, regulation, legislation, code, whatever. Quite frankly, mitigation banking for the department in the marine environment is one of those things. Because mitigation banking right now in the marine environment does not match with our current mitigation banking laws, regulations, you know, that kind of thing. So there would need to be a change, which I welcome, but you know, <laughs> that, that, that kind of, we would have to go, oh God, this is a great idea, but we're limited because this, we can't do that right now. So, you know, I think there'll be trade-offs like that that will okay. help, I think. And I think that there's opportunity, I mean, certainly for the commission, we have our sea level rise guidance, right? Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. that's short of like making it, you know, full on regulatory, right. but it is something that is followed to the extent that it is appropriate and makes sense for any given situation. So I think guidance offers a certain amount of flexibility for agencies to be yeah. able to adopt the pieces that do work. So I think that that's cool. still a very usable format. Um, two other things that we we haven't uh, talked about because it's been sort of low priority and trying to get this group going. But uh, two other things we did try to build in that address this at least a little bit um, in our funding is one: we have money to set up a website, um, and the intent with that was to be as transparent as possible. So not this very first little bit, but once we get like these first kind of draft documents, to have an open website that's open to anybody 
that any agency or or whoever the heck can go and like see our draft documents and like you know references and stuff so that our our, our materials are um again once it's in that first first um smell test kind of uh you know pass the test uh, anybody can check in and see and so the hope there is that transparency will help with a little bit of this so as opposed to just Becky, have an email all these people, make sure you see this, that you could just say, hey, go look at this website. Right. And so, um, and you know, uh, uh, me designing a website, as, as Max will tell you, is probably a horrible idea. So, but, but actually having somebody for somebody that actually thinks about how users use that, um, which is not what we typically do in these situations, might help a little bit with engagement and in, in getting folks to understand. And then the other thing that we have some money for is to do some um, a polling. Um, where we can use some more formal anonymous or non-anonymous tools to capture a wider net context of how people think of or, or people's concerns and or, I mean, I, I think as I was originally thinking of it, it would be after we've gone through this initial phase and we have these conceptual stuff, sort of float those out there and see what kind of buy-in there is to these things as opposed to doing that now. But, but those types of, of ways of reaching out to the broader community, agencies to be sure, but also just even the general public and biros to make sure that we're not creating a, a giant landmine that people are going to go, this is a horrible idea, this is stupid. Yeah. So buy in both agencies and um, some of the folks that might um, uh, work to confound some of the guidance um, or, or how we were trying to sort of address that um, at, the, at the structural level of the grant. And as, I mean, the other mechanism, right, um, under under the Water Quality Monitor Council, there's like, you know, there's a weapon monitoring work group, and now there's a yesterday monitoring work group, which we recently reconvened. And those are also great venues that totally. we could like present and, and get some totally. uh, some exposure sure. across the agency. Yeah, absolutely. Pre presentations at, at meetings, WSNs, those kinds of things would be great to get more pull in. Looks like Josh raised his hand. Oh, sorry. Josh, go for it. At least I think I saw that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you participate in or maybe I'm, oh no, there's a sorry. Uh, you Josh, did you have your hand raised? Seconded, Josh. Yeah. I wonder why we can't hear you. Uh, maybe if I need to stop sharing. Oh, there you go. There you go. Go for it, dude. Uh, so, so, so Josh, for some reason we can't hear you. Hold on a second. I don't know why we can't hear you. Let me try this. Sorry, we haven't been able to hear you. Hold on. Let's try. Um, yes, this is what happens when the professor tries to uh, try to do this. Try that, Josh. Try that now. No, I don't. Um, uh, I'm not sure. Um, Brenton, you want to take a whack at this and figure out why we can't hear Josh talking? <laughs> He's not muted uh, on his side. Can you, can you talk for a second, Josh? I don't know why. We could hear you guys before. I don't know what happened here. Um, great. Uh, We're working on our side. Try this guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why we can't hear you, Josh. I'm sorry. Um, uh, Charles or Pete, can one of you guys try talking, see if there's an issue with Josh or if it's the system, how it's configured? Can you hear me, Sean? Yeah, I can hear Pete. So there's some, something on your end, Josh, that we can't, um, we can't hear your microphone. Well, at least that's one thing we're good Sorry, still can't, still can't hear you, man. Why don't you try to chat him? Maybe he can't hear you. So he's, he's added a few comments in the chat. Uh, I can read them out. Yeah. Easier. I'm okay. Try to chat him, Brendan, and tell him that we can't hear him. He might <laughs> okay, so. Um, uh, looks like. Uh, Josh has added in that uh, coastal California is ecologically and politically large and complex. Do we intend for the general framework to apply more or less to marine, estuarine, and intertidal, um, regardless of jurisdiction? Yes, is the answer to Josh's first question. 
Second, who gets our output beyond contractual recipients of deliverables if the goal is to affect policy, the coast as a whole? Um, so, so yeah, so we will, um, um, you know, send it out to everybody here, but also we're going to have that website as a place for this kit to live. And the intention is also to do some, um, you know, peer reviewed publications and stuff to get it out in the literature as well. So we're trying to get it as, as widely delivered um, as possible. Um, Josh's next question is San Francisco estuary experience might be informative a regional approach was used there to get quantitative habitat goals with all agencies participating which became common goals across agencies representing ideal future conditions in the context of climate and social change, which turned the map based goals into the geoscope for trade offs turn uh, turning off site out of kind mitigation to a tool to achieve the ideal. Goals have been updated to address climate change, and a regional monitoring program is funded to track progress, quantify thresholds, etc. I don't think the model is applicable everywhere in the coast, broadly writ, but it might um, be ex examined as a case study. Um, so yeah, uh, Josh, did you can you try talking again to see if we got your uh, your microphone fixed? Yeah, sorry. I guess we still can't hear you. Um, okay, um, well, we were going to we were going to roll into um, a, uh, uh, some definitions, but I think maybe this is a good place to just take a take our break right now and we can maybe uh, maybe I'll I'll, I'll yeah, re, 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 restart this and so why don't we all take a, um, a 15 minute break and we'll come back and if we can get uh, uh, Josh's stuff figured out maybe we can have his comments kick us off in, in 15 minutes. Thanks everybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm positive. No, no, not your fine. Yeah. 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 Could you could you text him? Could I guess I'll stop this recording here. So he's going to retire to you, and I'm retiring to you. Why is it? I'll wait to one year. Yeah, it's a little longer, maybe the first quarter of next year. I think you could retire to you, but I guess hopefully it would be for the third piece is, of course, I was on the board. Well, I have to show you. Well, yeah. I mean, we also sampled Arroyo.